Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We don't really have uh, any uh, announcements uh, this morning other than the fact that uh, myself, um, Pastor Josh, uh, the senior pastor here, our associate pastor, Pastor Barbara, uh, who you will see uh, in a moment, and our music director, Uh, Allah, uh, we all welcome you to this Easter Sunday morning worship here at the United Methodist Church at Milltown, Uh, and we are thrilled that you have decided to spend Easter Sunday uh, this morning with us. We do have uh, two normal uh, worship services, uh, one on Saturday nights at 6 p.m. and our Sunday morning 10 a.m. worship time, which uh, you are currently joining us for, and so um, I'll just double check to make sure that we didn't think of anything in the meantime. Yeah. All right, Pastor Barbara has uh, given me the, the thumbs up. So with that, I will invite us to bow our heads and hearts for our opening prayer. Jesus, on this grand day, you defeated sin and death and rose to new life. In this time of worship, come to us. Minister to our fears and doubts and raise us to new life. May we in this hour not only sing about your resurrection victory, but come to believe in your triumph. May we not only adore you in our worship, but follow you forth into the world as we show in our lives and in our words that we have seen the Lord. He is risen indeed. Amen. This time we will uh, invite everyone to join us in singing. Uh, We're going to ask that everyone remain seated uh, in hymn number 304, Easter People Raise Your Voices. For those who are here, uh, the hymn is attached uh, to your bulletin uh, packet.
call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that sees Christ rise. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of new beginnings, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. When all hope seemed gone, you raised Jesus from the grave. We come before you today, longing for your life-giving presence. God of new life, raise us up with all your people. Lift us from the tombs of our despair and doubt, that we may rejoice in your power over death. God of joy, fill our hearts with alleluias as we sing your praises. Glory to God. Amen. Well, this morning, for those who are here and for those who are at home, for our children's chat, I had to ask uh, Miss Alla for uh, if she was okay if I borrowed one of her plants. She loves uh, plants, and her office is filled with many, many plants. Uh, we have beautiful uh, lilies that are up front here uh, in the uh, front of the sanctuary but it would be kind of hard for me to uh, get down, move the camera over and everything for you to be able to see the lily. So I asked Miss Alla if it was okay if I could borrow one of the plants from uh, her office. And so I was able to find one in her office that's uh, nice and, and tiny and, and uh, cute. Uh, and so this uh, plant is uh, special because there's one bu a bud that hasn't uh, sprouted a flower quite yet. And when a flower, when you're planting them, the seed has to go into the ground. But in order for the seed to go into the ground, generally something has died, kind of like Jesus died. But as we celebrate today, Jesus rose and brought forth new life. And so that's what we're celebrating today is that Jesus rose from the dead and that there is new life. And so for those who are gathered here uh, in the sanctuary, you can see the beautiful flowers and it's this beautiful reminder that as uh, these flowers in front of me are beginning to uh, blossom and to bloom, that Jesus offers new life for each and every single one of us. And that's what the empty tomb means also with uh, Miss Alla's uh, flower that I'm going to leave right over here that's still uh, in view of the camera. But whenever you are out on a walk later today, because it's going to be a beautiful day, or later this week, and you see a flower coming up out of the ground, remember that the tomb is empty and that there is indeed new life uh, because God loved us that much and that we now have opportunity for new life. So with that, we're going to invite everyone to uh, join us in singing again, uh, remaining seated, number 307, Christ is Risen. Christ is real. 
Friends, at this time, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for a word of prayer. God, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power that is in your name. Thank you that you hold the keys over death. Thank you that by your might, Jesus was raised from the grave, paving the way for us to have a new life with you. Thank you for your plan. Thank you that you made a way. We praise you for your great strength. We praise you for your lavish love. We praise you that you are conqueror, victor, redeemer, and friend. We praise you that you are deliverer, worthy one, everlasting father, great and awesome God. God, we confess our need for you, fresh, new, again. We ask that you renew our hearts, minds, and lives for the days ahead. We pray for your refreshing over us. Keep your words of truth planted firm within us. Help us to keep focused on what is pure and right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. We ask that you will be our defense and rear guard, keeping our way clear, removing the obstacles, and covering the pitfalls. Lord, lead us on your level ground. Shine your light in us, through us, and over us. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and purposes. Set your ways before us. May all your plans succeed. We may reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. God, we pray for those who are struggling with loss, loneliness, and health. We pray for all of our essential workers, our parents, teachers, and students. God, we also lift up our community here of Milltown. Thank you, God, for your indescribable gift. To you be the glory and honor on this resurrection day and forever. And in this time, we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. And this is what the gospel says. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on, the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll away the stone from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And it was indeed a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go, tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going on ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. 
I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for a word of prayer before the message. God, as we come this Easter morning and we come to worship, we may be in all different places this morning. We pray for open minds and open hearts. We pray for an understanding that you are a God that goes before, a God that has worked in the past, a God that is working now, and a God that will work in the future. Be with the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth. Amen. Well, friends, as I begin this sermon, as I often like to do, I want to start by asking you a question, a simple question. Where are you this Easter? Well, maybe it's been a crazy chaotic week uh, and you need a reminder you're in Milltown. You're at the United Methodist Church at Milltown if you're here in person, but you may also be uh, at your home in many different locations. I know we have people that are watching uh, across the country uh, or who are listening all over, and so um, you may also be in your home at the same time, but that is the power of technology. But I'm not so much talking about the location of where are you this morning on Easter. What I'm talking about is in your faith. Where are you this Easter morning when you think about the resurrection story? Have you come here this morning in full force of faith that when we sing these songs you are in a mode of celebration? Or have you come here this morning that you appreciate the music, but you are in a mode of wondering if it was really possible? Or have you come this morning as a complete and utter skeptic that, well, you're here because family has drug you along, or uh, mom and dad have forced you to sit down and watch online? Either way, we at the United Methodist Church at Milltown are glad that you are here, and God is glad that you are here and are listening. For some of us who grew up in the church, we wonder how anyone could possibly be a skeptic of the resurrection. But it's almost like seeing a magic trick. When you see a magic trick, when you are a child and the magician performs the magic trick, you are in full force belief that the magician holds a special power, aren't you? But then, when you grow older, you begin to try to wonder and figure out and maybe solve that magic trick yourself so you can replicate it. But then, as time goes on, you begin to believe less and less in actual magicians, no matter how amazing they actually are. But when you watch a magician, it still requires a response. No matter whether you believe, are skeptical, or have no belief in that magician, it requires a response, and the same is true of the resurrection. A response is required. See, our gospel account today and the other gospel accounts show that the lady is going to the tomb and in fact, the other disciples were all over the board in terms of belief when they had found out about Jesus' resurrection. The ladies that were going there, they were indeed dedicated. But when they went to the tomb, they didn't necessarily believe that Jesus had originally raised from the dead. In fact, they were asking themselves, who will roll away the stone? Because they were anticipating Jesus still being there. Some of the disciples, in fact, needed proof when Jesus showed up that it was indeed actually Jesus that had risen from the dead. And yet there were other disciples that believed when they heard. The disciples and the women 
that were there that morning, they came from all three different perspectives that I started by asking the question, where do you find yourself this morning? The reality is, as we find ourselves gathered here this morning all over the faith spectrum, so the disciples and the ladies that morning were all over the faith spectrum. But Mark starts off with good news by talking about the fact that the tomb is indeed empty. Even when other questions are raised in the text, he begins with the important fact that the tomb is indeed empty empty, and good news is communicated from the beginning. As I mentioned, these ladies are dedicated. They are dedicated to finishing this process of burial. They are dedicated by going early in the morning as soon as they possibly can with these spices that have been purchased. When they peek in, they don't initially look and shout, He is risen, as we so would like to believe. No, what they believe is that maybe Jesus' tomb was robbed, and that maybe someone carried off Jesus' body. It's not exactly the Easter story that we so often like to celebrate on Easter Sunday. But God had a plan. God had a plan and had a speaker or speakers there, depending upon the accounts of the Gospels that you read, to explain that no one had made off with Jesus' body, but that indeed Jesus had risen just as Jesus said that he would do. See, God's plan wasn't thwarted by the cross. No, God's plan was redeemed and followed through by the cross and the empty grave. Even the women who leave fearful that morning also leave filled with hope and amazement. Friends, even in the times in life that are filled with fear for us, we can be filled with hope that the tomb is indeed empty. See, I am a firm believer that we worship a God who has a track record of working miracles in the past, is currently working miracles now, and will work miracles in the future. The question is simple. Are we a people that are watching? See, the resurrection isn't an ending to a story, but rather an invitation. It's an invitation for us to continue the life-changing work, the redemption story that God is working. And no one And I mean no one is left out of this story. God wants to reveal resurrection power, resurrection grace, and resurrection love to everyone. Our text reminds us of one important part from the gospel today, that the ladies were to go and to talk specifically to Peter. Yes, that Peter. The Peter that had denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times just within hours beforehand. If that Peter can be forgiven, if that Peter can be loved, friends, so can we. The good news is, is that no matter where you came into this worship service today, What Jesus did is life-changing, and God is reaching out for you. That is who Jesus is. Jesus is a life-changer. I want to close by talking about a story about a pastor who thought that he had created a pretty dynamic children's sermon. He spent a little while researching it and really thought that he had quite the humdinger ready to go. And so as he was building up this children's sermon, and he was talking to the children, he asked the children a simple question, do you know what Jesus said to the disciples when he appeared? And so one of the little girls raised her hand, and so the pastor called on her, and this was towards the beginning, the pastor had a little ways still to go in the children's sermon, and so he calls on her. And she looks at the pastor and says, yes, ta-da. Well, 
That was where the pastor decided to end his children's sermon because, as he said, there was no greater translation than that. Jesus said, Tada. So, friends, whether you are gathered here this morning as the disciples and women came, whether it be full of faith, skepticism, or you need proof, trust me and know God is active and God is working. God has worked in the past, is working now, and will work in the future. After all, the tomb is empty. Jesus has showed up, and Jesus has indeed said in the wise words of that little girl, the theologian, Tada! I firmly believe that we do worship that God that is working and is life-changing. May we be a people that leave here today changed just as the disciples and ladies did that morning. May we share the good news with not just our deeds, but also our words, so that other people can understand and know that we are a people that are changed by grace and a people who are indeed loved. Amen. Friends, at this time, we will invite you to join us in singing our closing hymn uh, while we remain seated, number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today.
Friends, I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened for us the gate of everlasting life. Give us your continual help. Put good desires into our minds and bring them to full effect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God's blessing of new life be yours. May God's gift of peace fill your hearts. May God's promise of forgiveness give you hope. May you go forth to tell the good news. We have seen the risen Lord. Alleluia. Easter, everyone.